بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise and thanks belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala May the peace and blessing of Allah be upon his servant and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam As to what follows my dear respected brothers in Islam The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says in the authentic hadith يقال لصاحب القرآن يوم القيامة اقرأ وارتق ورتل كما كنت ترتل في الدنيا فإن آخر منزلتك أو فإن منزلتك عند آخر آية كنت تقرأها This is a very important hadith It teaches us one's relationship with the Quran and how it is supposed to be النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم He says that on the day of judgment صاحب القرآن is called out now, the ahadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam make a difference between people that are called Ahlul Qur'an and people that are يعني, in the category or among the people of Sahibul Qur'an. There's two differences. Sahibul Qur'an, my brothers, is someone who يعني, made friends with the Qur'an. The word Sahib, it comes from, يعني, it means a friend. Just like the Sahaba of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they're called Sahaba, companions, because they're always with him. So they were called Sahaba. They wake up with him, they sleep with him, they learn from him, they pray with him, they fast with him, they do all the good with him. So they were called Ashab Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sahib al-Quran is someone who sleeps with the Quran, wakes with the Quran, walks with the Quran, implies it in his life, reads it day and night, in the morning, in the afternoon, it doesn't matter. He's always in relationship with the Quran. Just like when you, you yourself, you have a Sahib, that means you have a friend. And the friend of yours, Yani, it's not that you see him once a month and you never see him. A real close friend of yours, you're always in contact with him. Whether you see him in the masjid, if not on the phone, if not on the messages, if wherever you see him, you, you sit down, you hang out some time. This is how a relationship of a person with his friend. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, by saying Sahib Al-Quran, he's teaching us that the minimal relationship you're supposed to have with the Quran is like a person has with his friend. You wake up with the Quran, if you read it in the morning, What's the problem if you open it in the afternoon and read a bit more? And then what's the problem if you open it again at night before you sleep and read some more? You know, this is the relationship that one has to have with the Quran. That's the minimal being Sahib Al-Quran. A higher level is Ahlul Quran. Now, now this Ahlul Quran is a different story. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Hum Ahlullahi wa this, is, this is the special selected family of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the Ahlul Quran, family of the Quran. These are people who, work their entire days and nights in the Qur'an, in the tafsir of the Qur'an, teaching it, implementing it, studying it, you know, day and night. This, this is a different category. But what I'm sharing with you now is a hadith that inshallah ta'ala relates to you and I, at least we're supposed to be from Sahib al-Qur'an. Sahib al-Qur'an isn't necessarily someone who's memorized the Qur'an, Ahlul Qur'an is. But Sahib al-Qur'an is someone who picks up this Qur'an every day and he has a portion of Qur'an he reads every day. So that maybe once every year he finishes the Qur'an. Maybe if he's a slow reader, he's reading two pages a day. That's 604 pages. He's finishing just less than a year. And then he begins his new khatma and so on. If someone is quicker in his Qur'an and he's reading one juz a day, then he's finishing it once a month. And he repeats. Once he finishes, he goes again. And that is Sahib al-Qur'an. Finish, start. Finish, start. This is Sahib al-Qur'an. Such a person on the day of judgment, Allah Azza wa Jal calls them out. So Sahib al-Qur'an, my brothers, just to be clear, isn't someone who necessarily has memorized the Qur'an. It is someone who has a consistent portion that keeps reading it over and over again. On the day of judgment, Allah Azza wa Jal calls them out to say, Iqra. He says to him, Iqra. Just like the first word that was revealed in this dunya from the Qur'an was, Iqra, Bismi Rabbik alladhi khalaq. My brothers, Iqra never finishes. Even on that day, Allah Azza wa Jal now is saying to you, Iqra. But now the only book that is supposed to iqra is the Qur'an. So Allah Azza wa Jalla says iqra to the Sahib al-Qur'an. Now imagine someone didn't have any relationship with the Qur'an. What, what is said to him? This person is ignored. He won't even be receiving this يعني, command of iqra. So Sahib al-Qur'an is told by Allah, by the one who revealed the book, the one who upheld the book and honored the book, Allah Azza wa Jalla now speaks to him, says to him iqra, read the book, wartaqi, and elevate, waratil, and relax. Sit back and read as slow as you can at tartil. Don't rush in your recitation. You have the entire time right now. Waratil, kama kunta turatilu fi dunya. Recite and ease in your, يعني, read so smoothly and gently and softly, just like you used to recite in this dunya. 
طيب what about if the one who never used to recite in this dunya was said to him nothing كما كنت ترتل في الدنيا فإن منزلتك عند آخر آية كنت تقرأها your level Allah Azza wa Jal says to him read go ahead your level in the paradise is going to be with the last ayah you used to read in this dunya. Yani, you, know, you know what this means. Surah Al-Baqarah, my brothers, is 286 ayat. If you never used to read Surah Al-Baqarah, that's 286 levels on you gone, cancelled. You lost them. Surah Ali Imran is 200 ayat. If, never, if you never used to have a program in where you used to recite it once every 10 months, once every month, that's 200 levels gone down the drain, wasted because you didn't decide to read Surah Ali Imran. <coughs> Surah An Nisa, 176 ayat. If you never used to recite it, ayywa, 176 levels gone. Surah Al Ma'idah, 120 ayat. You've never seen Surah Al Ma'idah, you've never recited it in your life, you never had a cycle where you continuously recited it. That's 120 levels gone. Juza Amma and Juza Tabarak together make 995 ayat. 995 ayat if you never used to recite them regularly it doesn't matter you've memorized them but if never you used to recite them regularly that's 995 levels you wasted every single air my brothers is is a level in the in the in the in the elevator that takes you up in your levels to the paradise so it's very important that one has a relationship with the quran and has a portion that he recites daily he said on the Day of Judgment, your level is with the last ayah you used to recite. So you need to, you need to يعني, make a program for yourself where you consistently recite the Quran. You finish it, doesn't matter, it takes you two years to finish it. But at least you have a portion of, of every single day of the Quran where you read. You finish in two years, Allah, after two years you begin a new khatmah. And then you finish and you begin again. This is someone kunta taqra'uha. This is someone who is recognized as kunta taqra'uha. As for those who never used to look at the Quran, knew what it is. There is a Quran, there is something that I've never read them, I never see them, and why I can't read now, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Then your level will be where? Right towards the bottom. Not only this, my brothers, the, the level in the paradise and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explains. Uh, this is the Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he says. That the level in the paradise, the height of a level, one level in the paradise is the distance between the earth and the sky. No one has ever reached the sky. Well, a hadith, they mentioned that it takes 500 years to reach the sky from earth. That's one level. Yani one ayah of the Quran you never used to recite and you never used to continuously recite. That's one whole level. The distance from the, the earth to the sky, you lost because of your laziness, because you didn't choose to make a program for yourself in where you recite the Quran. My brothers and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had a part and a portion of the Quran he used to recite. Even he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to have this. So there was a narration, uh, one of the companions he narrates that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during the ending period or during his last times in Medina, the last the ending years in Medina, Used, Bani Thaqif, Wafid Bani Thaqif used to come to him, groups by groups. This is Bani Thaqif, this is towards the end of Medinan period. Uh, they used to come to, يعني, some of them would accept Islam. Some of them, they had some serious important issues in Islam. They needed direction and guidance and a fatwa from Rasulullah So they used to come and they used to pray Isha with Rasulullah And then he used to turn to them. And whoever wanted to accept Islam, he'd يعني, give him the shahada and uh, he'd accept Islam. And anyone who had a question, he'd answer him. This is what he used to do. So there was one night in where he prayed Isha and rushed back to his home, to his house, and he didn't come out for a very long time. And keep in your mind, there are people outside that want to accept Islam. There are people that have some serious issues that need some advice and guidance from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is sitting in the house. He's doing something in his house. And this is very weird. This is the first night this happens. So hours go by, and then he comes out eventually. And they say to him, Ya Rasulullah, ma abda'aka anna. What delayed you, Ya Rasulullah from coming out to us? What were we in need? Yani it's not like he stopped himself from coming to what wasn't good. Yani everything would say in your mind that he should have rushed out because there are people that want to accept Islam, people need da'wah. So he said to them, SubhanAllah, he said, he said to them that 
my portion of the Quran that I recite every day, I hadn't recited it on that day. So I declared a state of emergency upon myself that I'm not allowed to leave the house until I read my portion of the Quran. He used the verb bara'a. Bara'a comes from the word tawari, meaning emergency. I mean, this is, I'm, I'm in a crisis right now. My worry right now is that I haven't recited my part of the Quran. So he said, فَكَرِهْتُ أَنْ أَطْلَعَ عَلَيْكُمْ I disliked that I come out to you and I still haven't recited my part of the Quran. That's the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's worry. You just sit back and think, what is your worry? What do you worry during your day? And then this is why he came. And what he's going out to is something really good. But he considered that his part of the Quran not being recited is much more important than coming out for someone to accept Islam and for someone to, to have some direction and guidance on whatever serious issue they have. And they're coming all the way from Thaqif and they're sitting in the masjid, they're tired, they want to go back. Still, it doesn't matter. He hasn't recited his part, so he wouldn't come out. So my brothers, I say to you, your relationship with the Quran isn't a choice a believer has. It's not a choice you have. The difference between deciding to open the Quran and not open it is the difference between the fire and the paradise. You choose for yourself. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, Man a'rada anhu, man a'rada anhu. Anyone who turns away from the Quran, anyone who decides not to open the Quran, anyone who abandons it. And this word a'rada anhu doesn't only necessarily refer to the disbelievers. This could be referring to Muslims and righteous Muslims as well. Because the word a'rada and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used it to describe a companion. He used it to describe a companion. Who are we compared to the companions? When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting in a gathering, it's a famous hadith and there were three people. And the last one, he looked at the majlis, he looked at the gathering, when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sharing a hadith with the companions, and he decided to walk off. Like he didn't give it any importance. He had something else, something more important to do, and he walked off. Companion, radiallahu anhu. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to his companions, thalithu, as for the third one that you just saw, looked at us and walked by, فَأَعْرَضَ فَأَعْرَضَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ He turned away and Allah turned away from him. He says, on a companion, this word was dropped. So you imagine now the hadith, the ayah in the Quran where Allah says, مَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْهُ Anyone who turns away from it could be a believer. How many Muslims are there that still till this day use the excuse, I don't know how to read. And I don't know how to read and I don't know how to read. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received the Quran at the age of 40. The companions were learning the Quran at the age of 50 and you still hide behind, I don't know how to read. That is man a'radha'an. Start learning, do something in your life to start making a relationship with the Quran. Man a'radha'anhu fa'innahu yahminu yawm al-qiyamati wizra. The one who decide, decided not to create between himself and the Quran a relationship. On that day, Allah Azza wa Jal says, yahminu yawm al-qiyamati wizra. He'll carry a huge burden, a sin. A massive sin he'll create on he'll hold on the day of judgment. Why? Because in this dunya, he decided for himself not to carry the Quran, not to have it with him wherever he is. So this is replaced, and on the day of judgment, he'll carry something else, and that is a sin. So, my brothers, at the end of the day, you're going to carry something. Either you carry the Quran now so that you're saved from the bigger sin on the day of judgment, or you decide not to carry the Quran, you're going to carry something. And that is wizran on the day of judgment. You know, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, يَحْمِلُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وِزْرًا خَالِدِينَ فِيهِ وَسَاءَ لَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ حِمْلًا What a horrible, what a terrible carry and a burden it's going to be on the day of judgment. يَوْمَ نَحْشُرُ الْمُجْرِ Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَسَاءَ لَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ حِمْلًا يَوْمَ يُنْفَقُ فِي الصُّورِ وَنَحْشُرُ الْمُجْرِمِينَ He called them mujrimeen, criminals. Those who didn't make a relationship with the Quran in this life, they're resurrected on the day of judgment and gathered with the criminals. So this is something really important, my brothers. It's not a choice. Opening the Quran isn't just about, Wallahi, ten hasanat, every letter, let me yani, stack up on the hasanat. Opening the Quran isn't just about, you know, receiving the guidance from the Quran and enlightening our hearts and our lives. But opening the Quran is a must. If you don't open the Quran, then there's, there's yani, a, a, gathered on the, on the day of judgment as a criminal, Khalidin Afi in the hellfire. So it's not a choice that a believer has. You call yourself a Muslim, a believer doesn't open the Quran. How is this? 
And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had Quran recited every single day and he had a portion of it. And above all, Wahi is being delivered to him every day of 23 years, Wahi is being received to him. So in other words, he's reciting Quran every single day. The fact that for Wahi is coming down every day. But this is something you need to understand. <coughs> you know, I say to you, if you want to lose your deen, you want to lose your guidance, you want to lose your steadfastness and your commitment to the Islam, Allah Azza wa Jal gives a solution in the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jal gives a solution. Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, Man kana yadhunnu an la yansurahu Allahu fi dunya wal akhirah in Surah Al-Hajj. A lot of times we read, we don't even look into the deeper meaning of the ayah. Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, anyone who assumes that Allah Azza wa Jal will not give victory to his Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Anyone who assumes that Allah will not give victory to Islam and to the believers and to the Quran and to the deen of Allah, then Allah Azza wa Jal guides them. He gives them a solution. There is only way, one way you can achieve that. Allah is telling the disbelievers, He is telling them there is only one way in order to achieve the result of destroying Islam and Rasulullah and everything got to do with the deen. But this is the solution. This is what they have to do. فَلْيَمْدُدْ بِسَبَبٍ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ He's got a, he needs to get a really long ladder and he has to raise it to the sky. ثُمَّ الْيَقْطَعَ And then he has to cut, he has to chop off. Now the ulama, they say cut what? Let him, he has to cut the wahi that comes down from the sky onto the earth. He needs to cut it. Yeah, in other words, if they want to be victorious upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they need to cut him from the wahi. They need to distance him from the wahi. And as long as the disbelievers are successful in convincing the Muslims that you don't have to have a relationship with the Quran, you don't have to read the Quran, you don't have to ponder over the meaning of the Quran, you don't have to study it. When they are successful in convincing us that the Quran is a book of violence, it's a book of destruction, a horrible book, you should keep your children away from it, so long as they are successful in that, then we won't see any victory. Allah Azza wa Jal gives them the solution. He says, cut them from the Quran and you'll get victory and you'll be dominant over them. And that is the case. If you look at the Muslim woman around you, what's the problem? The problem is that people aren't related and re yani in relationship with their Quran, you know? And I always ask this question, but I don't want to ask it now. But I ask the question of who has a portion of the Quran they recite a day. Yesterday at my talk, I gave this. Wallahi, not even 5% raise their hand. Yani, MashaAllah, the way we're going, victory is, is round the corner. If you have no relationship with the Quran, then you are a reason for why this Ummah is where it is. Because you decided for yourself not to carry this Quran and implement it in your life and try to understand something from it. So this is, my brothers, a very crucial topic. It's not your choice. It's not yani, around you. The, the Quran doesn't work around you. You're supposed to work around it and make time for it and open and recite. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, oh Allah, very scary hadith. Bilal radiallahu anhu was the mu'addin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one day just before Fajr, he seen the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam run to his room, to his house. And uh, it was time for adhan, it was time for iqama. So the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hasn't come out yet. Bilal radiallahu anhu rushes to the room of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Ya Rasulullah. And he's seen him crying. He's seen him sitting down in his bed and he's crying and he's shaking from his crying. He says to him, Ya Rasulullah, what's wrong with you? He says to him, Ya Bilal, laqad unzilat alayya ayatun. He said, Bilal, last night ayat were revealed. Ayat were revealed and these ayat were the last ayat of Surah Ali Imran. Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ardi wa ikhtilafi al-layli wal nahari la ayatin li ulil albab. Such powerful ayat that moved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to tease and almost forgetting to come out for Salat al-Fajr. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, now this is the dangerous part. He said, Waylun liman qara'aha wa lam yatadabbarha. Waylun liman qara'aha wa lam yatadabbarha. And he said, may the destruction befall a person who reads them and doesn't ponder over them. Imagine the one that doesn't read them at all at all. What kind of destruction has he put himself in? And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is warning the one who reads and doesn't ponder. Yani, yani if you just read them and not pondering over them, that's the destruction of Allah upon a person. 
Imagine the case of someone who hasn't seen them in his life or doesn't even bother to read them to begin with. Subhanallah. For yani, my brothers, I say to you that the Quran, your relationship and reading the Quran and trying to understand and pondering over the ayat is something as a believer you have to do. Allah Azza wa Jal asks the Quran in the question, Ayyukum zadatu hadihi imana? Which ayah, which surah increased you in your iman? You know, like for example, Salat al-Fajr, we, we recited ayat from the end of Surah Maryam. The question from Allah Azza wa Jal to you every time you hear the Quran, Ayyukum zadatu hadihi imana? Which ayah increased your iman? Uh, who's brave enough to say to himself from the inside, this ayah increased my iman? This surah increased my iman? You know, this is the relationship you're supposed to have with the Quran. It's supposed to do something with your heart. Uh, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in the hadith, uh, uh, Anas radiallahu anhu, he reports and he narrates the hadith. He says, Asfarun nas, Asfarun nas, Asfar coming from the word Sifr, meaning the person who is zero, the loser on the day of judgment, Man laysa fi jawfihi shay'un min al-Qur'an. Someone who comes on the day of judgment has nothing in his heart of the Qur'an. And I ask you, what do you have today in your heart that you're going to work towards of the Qur'an? What is an ayah that you're going to live today? So for those that recited Fajr, Quran before Salat al-Fajr, before coming here, and those that are going to recite during the day now when you go home, what is the ayah that's going to be in your heart today that you're going to live by? Otherwise, مَنْ لَيْسَ فِي جَوْفِي شَيْءٌ مِنَ الْقُرْآنَ أَصْفَرُ النَّاسِ How do you live and go by a day where you don't even have at least an ayah in your heart that you're working towards implementing in your day? This is أَصْفَرُ النَّاسِ مَنْ لَيْسَ فِي جَوْفِي there's nothing inside. It's all it's on your tongue. You just read. So, yani, wallahi, I'm, I'm, I, did, I, I, I don't intend to be yani, as harsh as I was, but these are the ayat. And these are hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we need to instill in ourselves an importance with this Quran. This is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he decided to leave to the end as a special gift for this ummah. How do you treat the gift Allah azza wa jal gave you? وَقَدْ آتَيْنَاكَ مِنْ لَدُنَّا ذِكْرًا Every single ayah offers you guidance in your life. And every single ayah is a level in the paradise. 6,632 levels. These are the ayat in the Quran. That's how many levels there are in the paradise. So you need to, you need to concern yourself in the Quran. Make for yourself a relationship with the Quran in where you read the Quran in the morning. Doesn't matter, open it again in the afternoon. Open it at night, before you sleep, after you sleep, you wake up in the middle. Doesn't matter, your, your, your relationship with the Quran is the most important relationship you're going to have. Someone who is connected with the Quran is definitely connected with Allah Azza wa Jal. Because the rope Allah Azza wa Jal stretched from the sky to the earth is the Quran. So if you don't hold on to it, there is no way to Allah Azza wa Jal. This is Allah Azza wa Jal's word, the ulama, they call it Hablullah al mateen It's the strong rope between Allah Azza wa Jal and this earth. Seeking any other means to get to Allah Azza wa you're going to fail. The only way is through carrying and holding on to this Quran, and that'll take you into a relationship straight to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. My brothers, yani, this, is, this is my advice to you in this month. If you can at least, yani, whatever days remains from this month, perhaps just less than half now or half, use the most of your time towards the end of this month to at least if anything you're going to come out of this month is with one change and that is that you decide for yourself and commit yourself to a part of the quran if anything don't make this ramadan like every ramadan it finishes and you didn't take anything out of it if you're going to take one thing and only one thing take upon yourself a commitment an oath to allah azza wa jal that from now on until you meet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Every day I'm going to read a jizr, half a jizr, a quarter of a jizr, one from star to star, which is a ruba, one page, a half a page, whatever it is. So that if you're consistent on half a page, you finish by four years, next four years you begin again. And during this time you learn how to read and quicker in reading and so on, so that yani, you're resurrected with greater people on that day. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us people of the Quran. People who benefit from the reminders of the Quran in the Holy Yudalika or Qadir Ali, Sallallahu Sallam, Baraka Ali, Muhammad, Wala Ali, or Sahbi Ajmain.